All right. Now, what's fascinating about Colonel Sanders is that he's had a mask for a long time, since at least the 1960s, with these other popular kind of cartoon and comic characters, Bluebeard, Dennis the Menace, Johnny Quest, um, Broomhilda, Frankenstein. And it's just a weird, weird mask. Bob's big boy. <laughs> so it's Halloween coming up. He's not a, the most unusual uh, person to do. This is a more recent mask. But then he also has a corporate identity, right? He's based on a real guy. This guy right here. And he, some of his earliest logos were caricatures of him. But they didn't really work well as logos because they were really fussy. You see, they had lots of little lines. And when that gets reduced smaller, that doesn't really turn out so well. So what do we see now? We see this logo, which tries to really simplify, still makes it look like a photo and a real person with the um, how particular each shape is. But this is a vector shape that's very carefully designed, uses the positive and negative space to give you the impression of a real person. A real person that looks a little bit healthier than the, the man himself. So you don't associate fried chicken with anything but wonderful health. But I like the potential of this slightly older version, which was even more simplified and looks just a little bit pudgier, you know, a little bit softer, a little bit more like this just came out of a soft serve machine. And so I think I'm most inspired by this simple approach to it. It also doesn't look as corporate as this, right? So that's going to be my main influence. And then for zombies, like there's just no shortage, right? But I really like this one. And I don't know what this project was, was for, but I like the simple shapes, the strong outline. I even like the colors. And I'm going to do a black and white and color version. On the other end of the spectrum, I like this. But this just doesn't work that well as a logo, even though it's very symmetrical, because you lose all that definition in scale. So it relies too much on little nitpicky things like the, the discoloration of the gums. But it's pretty grody. So what I'm thinking is I'll do something really black, flat, and graphic, you know, kind of like these. And then when I color it, I might add some of that revulsion in the subtlety of the color. Because if a logo gets printed in color, it usually means it's, it's going to be able to show a little bit more subtlety as well. But it doesn't take much in coloring to really pop certain things out, like an eyeball. All right, let's see. So how can I approach this? Well, I'm going to start with sketching. And if you want to fit more of your reference on, you can just go to View Options within your Finder window and make the icon size smaller. And then I'll squeeze this into a smaller part of my desktop. This is like your design board. This is where you can kind of see your ideas before you start sketching. And if you have larger ones, you can make those a little larger off to the side should you need them. Like so. So you're going to use your sketchbooks, but I am going to use just an 8 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch file in, Illus in a Photoshop. We're used to Photoshop. I'm going to use a brush. So about 80% opacity isn't too small. So I can kind of sketch. And what is, I have to define my problem. So I'm doing a logo mashup of Colonel Sanders and more of the person than the idea of Kentucky Fried Chicken and a zombie skull. I don't want to do all of Colonel Sanders' body as a zombie because that just doesn't work as effectively as a logo object. So I'm sticking to the head. All right, so some quick ideas. I don't need to draw it particularly effectively for it to be helpful. 
but being a raster, I can kind of play with different ideas. So what if I use the hair of Colonel Sanders, this nice lumpy hair, and his ear, or at least part of his ear, and then one eye, definitely his hairline. So I'm mashing up logos, right? And I like how it goes to darkness. So then in the darkness on this side, I start biting away at it. And I start revealing, you know, skull teeth. But I might keep his mustache. But instead of a nose, he'll just have the hole for the nose. And then here, you'll still see his glasses. but it will also kind of define an empty socket. So these are the teeth. I'll define the teeth a little bit, and then I need the, the jaw. Now instead of the jaw connecting there, I want to make it more like a hanging jaw, a little loose, just to give the shape a little bit more power. It's all about the shape. The jaw will hang loose like that. Maybe. It's just an idea. And then it'd be fun to throw in the bow tie. Or this kind of unique tie. It's like a little ribbon underneath. All right, so where are the darks? Well, there's the darks here. There's the heavy outline all the way around. There's the eyebrows that might turn into the brow ridge for the skull. The mustache looks a little problematic, but I think I can make it work. And it goes to dark all along this side. Maybe inside the mouth as well. I need to show a connection of the jaw here. And we don't usually think of Colonel Sanders as being kind of emaciated and thin. Now he's a jolly figure. So this should be a fun little mashup that will just look odd and it will be hard to place for a minute. And then maybe later for my portfolio, I could pair it with a um, a nice logo type for zombie chicken, something like that. But just the idea of a zombie with a full head of hair is pretty funny. Okay, so maybe that's my sketch. Now, is that using symmetry? Not really, right? Is it using a dynamic composition? Not really. So can I push that a little bit further? Well, let's see. Maybe I can make it a little bit more symmetrical. So the eyes are here. So I think I want this kind of straightforward. I don't want the eyes zipping through it. I'm going to have the, the tie just right underneath, like so. Mustache. And then instead of the goatee, it will be more this defined jaw. And maybe just the top jaw. Maybe I don't need the bottom jaw at all. Maybe it's just the teeth. And then the strong cheekbones. But still the, the slightly dynamic asymmetrical hair. Yeah, maybe this approach is a little bit better. It's more symmetrical, right? Now, what could be interesting about this design is I start to see, I'll do it in a different color on a new layer. I start to see the potential in this design, and this is why we sketch to play around with playing with the negative space a little bit. 
I could kind of show a whole body zombie with his shoulder here and his arm reaching into the mouth here and kind of staggering. Right? I could make a suggestion of that zombie out here just with the negative space. That's a fun idea, but it it's more about that would be more for an illustration than for um, a logo, right? You don't want a logo to be too complicated. So I think this is the approach I'm going to go. Okay. Now, how can I make this approach work better than just trying to draw it? Well, what if I use what I know about compositing a little bit? Now, remember, these are not high-resolution images. And they don't need to be, but I'm going to bring them in as smart images, smart layers. And I'm going to start playing with them. Because the sketching for this can be partly in your sketchbook and partly digital. And what it largely is, is deciding what you can get away with, like what you can take away, how simple you can make it. So I like, oh, there's a few I like. Let's try this one. So to composite it just to get a visualization, I'm going to change it to multiply mode. I'm going to rasterize it so I can erase away. And now I'll use my transform tools to line it up. Make it a little bit bigger, not that big. Kind of line up the zombie's empty eye sockets with his glasses. Tilt it a little bit, nudge it. It's already pretty disturbing. All right. Take it off of multiply mode and then just start erasing away. I know I want the hair. I think I want the hair on all sides for the most part, but it'd be kind of fun if he lost one ear. Now the, the exposed vertebrae is pretty graphic, and I don't want it to be that disturbing, but I I do want to kind of cut away from some of this. I don't need the spurts of blood, for instance. Let me fill that in with white. So it's all about shape, right? And I do like that. You can also just erase away. This is just sketching. I'm trying to get a handle on my approach. Even though I'm using compositing to do it, I'm trying to be informed by my sketches, my vision for what this could be. And then I was tinkering with getting rid of the whole lower jaw. So let me try that. Just by duplicating the upper jaw here. Maybe a little bit of it all like this. Just duplicate that. See what I can do with it. <laughs> 